Well, 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 look who's feeling adventurous and, and decided to dig deeper into Steven Seagal's filmography. I'll try to go even further back when Steven wasn't yet a hands waving bubble and actually maybe put some effort into his acting. Three hours later. It was so bad, guys. It was all over the place. Nothing made sense in this movie. Seriously, during the whole production process, did nobody stop and say, What the f is this? And uh, from the very start of the movie it's pretty clear that Seagull can barely fit into the frame. A group of dudes get soaked in the rain and it's anyone's guess if they are special agents or elite powerful criminal syndicate. I run the biggest crime syndicate. They climb up a tower where Steven Seagull is chilling on a bed and the guys who broke into his place are there to offer Sasha a job. Hello, Sasha. But I have to warn you, Sonny, Seagull has a theme of playing secret agents, so I'd be careful about hiring him. Oh, it looks like Sony and his friends already thought about that. They brought a brick with a screen and act as it is a polygraph. You work for any law enforcement agencies? Of course it doesn't work, showing no reaction when Sasha's life is in danger and beeping like crazy when he is just cracking jokes. Sometimes, you know, I work for the CIA, for the KGB, US Marshals, Eastern Stasi. <laughs> Great one. So Sasha takes a flying car to take his old pal Nicholas to a dark place. Two and a half years, let's say. I've been asking you to call me Nick. I love Nicholas, all right? All right. And I love to call you an asshole for driving as an asshole and putting everybody's life in danger just to impress your friend. What? <laughs> I'm gonna kick your one day. So Nick runs a car service in a huge hangar filled with flammable barrels. That doesn't sound like a great business idea, so there is no wonder he's surprised to see any customer. You expecting somebody? I'd be expecting ambulance, Steven. And maybe the police after your tailspin quirks. Special Agent Williams, I'm with the FBI. My third Seagulls movie and third Special Agent Williams. The only difference is that this time it is a lady. You got big balls. No way to start, Nick. Am I missing something? So Agent Williams brought the whole arsenal of rifles and the whole SWAT team with her to ensure their smooth operation. But Nick? Our guy doesn't give a single crap. He immediately goes from I want my lawyer to flashing a pair of guns he apparently carried around in his pants all that time. And as for me, it's the perfect time to start shooting at the guys threatening an FBI agent. But instead, Agent Williams tries to bond with him over her experience of doing time in jail. Ever done hard time, Nick? You've been somebody's bitch? Does he look like a guy who will buy this bullshit, Agent Williams? No, I don't want that bullshit. I don't want that bullshit. I don't want that bullshit. That bullshit. That bullshit. That bullshit. Money back. After Williams' failed persuasion attempt, she starts counting till five. That's one, Nick. That's two, Nick. Three. Four. Come on, agent, shoot already. The fella is not going to surrender, isn't it clear? Four. Yes, shoot the goddamn guy. Put the gun down, man. It's a nice night. Are we going for another round of counting till five? Oh, Nick is also fed up with this nonsense and starts his own shooting party. A guy is jumping on a car for spectacular shooting. Oh. White colors with guns in suits rushing in along the armored soldiers with the rifles. Sasha's not taking any chance hiding behind flammable barrels. Nick's walking towards Agent Williams and a bunch of SWAT troopers pointing guns at him. Sasha doing his best to cover Nick with his fat body, dodging bullets like a pro. This all doesn't look like a smooth operation, Agent Williams. And eight months later, two bodies meet up again, but this time in the rock, in you in you Alcatraz from the rock. It is a maximum security prison where you can walk back and forth under convoy whenever you want to have a small chat with your old friend. Have you already been somebody, bitch? One of the guards has enough of Stevens walking around and gives him a nice little bait on in the airsh. <laughs> That's the only reason I can come up with to explain why Sasha starts beating crap out of him. Kids hit harder than that. No, kids hit harder than that. 
When this guy punched Yuniki, you floated around like a leaf in the fall breeze. El Fuege, the head of the prison, steps in finally, just to give Nick and Sasha an angry stare. This guy set up a whole press conference where every reporter tries to convince us, viewers, that New Alcatraz is a grim and extremely strict prison. You think you're hard, I'm harder. You think you're mean, I'm meaner. Same old, same old, man! And at the same time, the place looks more like a resort, where you can chill, read books, play video games, and if get really bored, beat crap out of guards. The only bleak spot in this careless life appear to be occasional death penalties. It's pretty rare, this is the first one, and you know, even though I'm strictly against the death penalty, Lester McKenna deserves what he's getting for that terrible crime against humanity. According to the news reporter, the guy you see has stolen gold worth half as much as Jordan Belfort's yacht. Even worse than that, he won't reveal the place where treasure is hidden. Now, you might think, just like me, that this lady arriving at New Alcatraz is here for yet another prison party, but surprise, surprise, turns out she is actually the judge who presided over Lester's case. Would you please care to enlighten us to why you are gracing us with your presence, Judge McPherson? And now that your death warrants come down, it's my job to see it through. No, it's not. Lester's dying wish is to speak with Sasha alone. Probably because he looks like a bloated Lord Raiden. This isn't your god of thunder and lightning. He's just a beggar. Spare him, my Lord Raiden. Lester presumes that Sasha is a god of thunder and wants his forgiveness for stealing sacred gold. But I think God will forgive. And while they are having a good time playing cards and trying different suits, a group of skydivers jumps right onto the feckless prison guards and shoot them like toys in a shooting gallery. And despite the fact that the prison is supposed to be the most secure in the United States, New in Trinity can waltz in there without anyone noticing the huge explosions. The skydivers are so discreet and stealthy that a prison guard walking with Sasha after their little execution party is shocked to see them freely wandering around. Of course, Sasha turns out to be the real god of thunder. Not only he can survive multiple gunshots, he also brings people back to life with the lightning. And skydivers are actually terrorists who want information on Lester's hidden gold. Oh, yes no. Because, you know, that's the best way to get rich. But Lester, the guy is keeping the top secret information under wraps. After failing to get what they want, terrorists decide to call in a rescue helicopter and make a swift escape to try another get rich quick scheme. But their pilot has different plans. He crushes the chopper on the rooftop above the most cruel prisoners. And the only thing for them left to do is to play basketball without a basket and hit on Trinity or Selena from Underworld. Sexy little thing. Agent Williams picks up a nice cup of coffee from Starbucks on a chopper and arrives to her office. There she learns about the rooftop crash at Alcatraz, as aviation catastrophes usually falls into FBI's jurisdiction. And in unexpected twist she reveals that... You got a man in deep cover out there. Prisoner? Yeah. What kind of man signs up for that? We ponder a mysterious undercover agent. Steven Seagal and his stunt double kicks some terrorists' asses and leaves them in shock with hand waving techniques. Sasha picks up loot from the mob and heads to the stairs where he stumbles upon Trinity. And there he tries to pull off the ultimate disguise by pretending to be Neo and stretch hand to stop bullets. But as the real Neo is much slimmer, she doesn't buy it, disarms the guy and then, instead of shooting him, she jumps from the stairs. Trinity lands on the basketball playground where Nikki had already picked up Sasha's gun. Suddenly characters who had done nothing during the whole movie are now ready to give their lives for him. Yeah, we got your back, dog. But their support is short-lived as they quickly fall down and become useless as soon as Nick and Trinity start shooting and flirting. And we already know, Nick can't stand long shooting. He quickly gets bored and runs into a hole. And I must say, the people in this movie don't miss any chance to fall from somewhere. Wee. 
Oh, Wee! Wee! Nick tries to outsmart Trinity by teleporting behind her, but let's be real, only Seagull stands a chance against her. As for Nikki, the poor guy is flying around like a leaf in the fall breeze again, until Sasha comes in, using his hand as a bulletproof shield. Don't even think about that, Sasha. A guy far less similar to a bag of burgers didn't... Oh, he made it to the top. So Sasha gets into the helicopter and contacts directly Agent Williams with a Bluetooth headset. Think you can help me? I can try. Can you do it without compromising the life of Jane McPherson? I'm at Mr. Z Lady. Ah, so he is the mysterious undercover FBI agent. Who could have thought? As they are chatting with Agent Williams, prisoners switch ball to a bazooka. And now they want to practice rocket jumping in real life. Back that time Quake 3 was still popular, so maybe I would also want to try that. Who knows. But then Sasha interferes and messes things up by changing the bazooka's direction, and Twitch flies in the wrong direction. Whee! Whee! And as there are no more rockets around, the friends head to the next room to search for more in a huge arsenal sufficient to equip a small army. Meanwhile in the hostage room, where Judge is about to test a new electric chair, Trinity gives a head to El Fuego. <coughs> Everyone else can't stop trying to find reasons why Neo wants to get gold worth of 200 million dollars. Why are you doing this? Why? Just treated you good. You one of these bad boys who didn't get enough love from his mother? Maybe trying to prove a point? There must be some reason for that. What? There is no deep, dark psychological reason for my behavior. I want the American dream, Frank. I don't get it. Hey, and there is no need to turn away in slow motion, as you've revealed some groundbreaking mystery. I already figured it out by myself. As they didn't get information from Lester about hidden gold and their helicopter had crashed on the rooftop, the plan is now just to get the hell out of the island in one piece. We already know how good Agent Williams is in negotiations, right? And what's your cause? My cause is me. And who are you? Who I am is not important. Tell me what you're doing. And what you are wearing. She immediately provides them with a chopper without any warranties given. Send the chopper. You want a chopper? Else? Nuclear bomb? Nuclear bomb. Luckily, Sasha and Nick are here to stop Agent Williams from supplying terrorists. They burst into the hostage room. Instead of killing the bad guys, they take Lester away. And Sasha tries to open the metal locks on the chair with bare hands. Of course, he failed and ran away. What a wonderfully planned operation. But where are the other heavily armed prisoners? Where is this big guy with the machine gun? How did he manage to mess up such a chance to win and end this wonderful movie using the element of surprise? Why is Sasha pointing his gun forward if Neo shoots him from behind? And yeah, I don't even ask how this big guy dodges bullet from three rifles in a narrow corridor. Sasha and Nick now play game of dodging invisible obstacles, when suddenly, out of nowhere, Sasha reveals that he is an undercover FBI agent. I'm undercover, FBI. Trying to cozy up to Nick tr to get closer to Sonny. I'm no rocket scientist, but if they were already chummy enough for Sasha to get a job from Sonny, how does getting locked up help him get any closer? I don't know. Sasha, taking up a more screen space than a billboard, lays a trap for Neo, pretending to exchange a judge for Lester. Neo falls for the con, and Sasha is so pleased with himself, he slaps the machine gun guy in the face. Just when they are packing their bags to meet terrorists, Lester decides to spin the beans about the hidden gold to Sasha. Why did he keep it in secret if it's not such a big deal, and he can reveal the secret to the first bubble he meets? Anyway, the moment of truth approaches and Nick and Sasha patch things up. Somehow. I'm guessing that Nick couldn't resist this charming smile, and the hostages exchange drags on forever. Lester stares at the judge, the judge stares at him, and then, for no apparent reason, prisoners start shooting and flying around. And even though at the beginning Sasha disapproved their actions, he quickly joins the shooting party and unleashes endless rounds into the air in front of him, on the rooftop, using these amazing techniques. No one hits anyone. Everyone seems to have endless bullets. At some point people get bored of the lack of action and start walking and jumping in the center of the hole just to spice things up. This big guy with a machine gun immediately catches some bullets from someone, it could be anyone. Everybody shoots in random directions, but most of the bullets seem to cross the point where this huge fella chooses to be. He didn't achieve anything with this action. Just at some point he decided to be a target and that's the whole arc of the guy. But oh, the crushed chopper finally can't handle the 
unbearable weight of Sasha and falls down burying Nick in rubble. Sasha manages to escape but lands in a wrong place right in front of two rifles. And when things are about to get messy, FBI arrives and saves the day by killing Trinity. Just like that. Where's the epic fight? Sasha gets to a fallen chopper and gives the best acting performance he can provide to say farewell to his friend. Don't say that, man. It's just hang in there. I'm gonna get you out of here. Come on, get me the hell out of here. Come on, Sasha. You just hang in there for me. Here. And even he looks disgusted with his own acting here. But hold on to your seats, folks. Turns out that those terrorists were just playing a little joke on everyone. When Judge walked in front of everybody, in front of Lester, nobody noticed that in fact it was another woman with the similar hairstyle. That's not McPherson. So now Neo has both hostages and the chopper, and he is now in a winning position, right? Wrong. The guy immediately throws away his winning card just for fun. So now Lester, who was seeking death from the very beginning of the movie, can now finally end his pointless existence by blowing himself up together with the chopper and bad guys while Sasha turns into a superman and flies after a fallen judge. So FBI and judge find hidden gold in the place Lester revealed to Sasha. Nick managed to survive and got away with a few broken bones and now continues being someone's bitch in El Fuego's prison. I heard you bust this sunny egg bone. Sasha got sunny somewhere behind the scene. We don't know how, when, never seen the guy after their first encounter. She knocked your sense back. Beast bomb. That's it. That's finally it. How could it become the worst Seagulls movie I have ever seen so far. Each of them becomes worse than the previous. I don't see any other option rather than digging deeper in order to find at least one worthy movie with him in a lead role. Till the next time. Cheers.